Booster 9 brings the heat to Starbase again. Starlink missions reach triple dig. Crew 7 prepares to defy gravity. The Biden administration still has it out for Elon. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. After last Friday's episode aired, SpaceX provided some behind the scenes shots to Booster 9 receiving its hot staging hat in South Texas. Elon commenting on X, interstage extension for hot gas venting added to enable Starship to turn on its engines while booster engines are still firing. Exclamation point. You know your company has created quite the hefty rocket when each stage requires its own launch pad, which is essentially what we have here. Then Friday night, the company snuck in another test of the splash pad under the cover of darkness. But luckily, RGB aerial photography was on site to capture the event. And on Tuesday, with its flame deflector crown resting upon its head, Booster 9 made the journey down Highway 4 back to the launch site for additional pre-flight testing. Then twas hoisted up onto the launch mount a few hours later. Next Starship launch soon. How soon? Well, per my last video, there was a Mariner notice in place for an orbital launch no earlier than August 31st. But as expected, that no earlier date has been updated to September 8th. Again, don't make any travel plans just yet. On Thursday, B9 began its additional pre-flight testing with a spin prime test, of course video provided by my pal Lab Padre. And then just moments ago, she lit up with, we assume, all 33 Raptor engines for a full duration of six seconds. Five, four, three, two, four, and booster nine static fire to complete. Rattle the rattle the walls here uh, over at uh, over at Starbase, but. Uh, we did hear the, the call out of full duration. At this point, uh, the teams can start going through the data, look at uh, how many engines fired, how all the tanks behaved, everything. But uh, great to see Booster 9 lighting up down here in South Texas once again. Moving right along, the 100th dedicated Starlink mission launched from Vandenberg on Tuesday morning, carrying 21 satellites to low Earth orbit was the 15th flight for the first stage, landing on Of Course I Still Love You drone shipping on the Pacific Ocean. The next Dragon mission to deliver astronauts to the space station for NASA and friends, Crew-7, was delayed from last night and is now targeting tonight for liftoff. The team of four consists of an American commander, a European pilot, a Japanese mission specialist, and a dirty Russian cosmonaut. Yeah. Jared Isaacman, commander of a future Crew Dragon mission, Polaris Dawn, sat down for an interview this week with CNBC and informed us that his spacewalking mission will most likely be pushed to a later date. You know, we're still hoping for the end of the year, but I suspect it'll probably uh, slip into the beginning of next year. He then went on to say that his team had a relatively lax training schedule this summer, since EVA suit development is a little behind schedule. Next item, please. The New York Post reported that Biden's brown shirts at the DOJ sued SpaceX on Thursday for alleged discriminatory hiring practices, but good luck convincing me it has nothing to do with Elon refusing to fall in line with the regime. And it turns out Elon agrees, but we'll get to that. The lawsuit itself alleges that, quote, from at least September of 2018 to May of 2022, SpaceX routinely discouraged asylees and refugees from applying and refusing to hire or consider them because of their citizenship status, unquote. We have plenty of both, by the way, thanks to pitiful Democrat border policies currently destroying major U.S. cities. You know, this is far from the first time this hiring issue has come up in my videos. Entitled crybabies from foreign lands have been complaining about this for years. You're going interplanetary, but you're not going international. When are you going to hire people from other countries than the U.S.? So many of you may remember the ITAR, or International Traffic and Arms Regulations, that Elon and SpaceX has used as its legal shield over the years. Because that's the government standard put forth and SpaceX is our nation's leading ballistic rocket creator, the inbred cousin of the ballistic missile family. Elon tweeted this morning that the fundamental principle of ITAR law is that U.S. companies who have advanced weapons technology, such as rockets with intercontinental range, must hire people who are permanent American residents so that technology does not fall into the hands of countries who wish us harm. So that's what ITAR is there, that's what it's for, and that's why they're abiding by it. Because it's the government's own standards by threat of punishment. 
Well, in violation of the law of non-contradiction, scholars in Biden's DOJ don't think ITAR applies here. So of course the government is seeking back pay for non-US citizens who felt they were denied employment due to alleged discrimination. Makes sense, right? More American taxpayer dollars to people of other nations. To be totally transparent with you, I no longer feel sorry for SpaceX or our nation anymore. In both cases, by their own hands, their ranks are full of social justice Democrats, as is the case for the majority of SpaceX's own fan base and content creators, outside of whom this channel affiliates with, of course. As a lot of you guys know, I've been trying to ring the alarm bells for like the past two years, ever since, you know, the pandemic started and the BLM rats were burning everything down. I saw the direction our country was heading. And I tried to wake people up and a lot of people didn't like it, but tough. Look at where we're at now, guys. Look where we're at now. We have gone over that cliff. You tear down the American gateway, none of us will be going far. So, you know, forgive me for not weeping over the rot that has officially caught up with us and has infected every part of society through and through. If the nation and the broader world itself has indeed entered under judgment, frankly, we deserve it. We would be a godless people if it weren't for the fact we worship ourselves. For me, space exploration was always about problem solving, building better tech and learning more about God's creation, not idolatry. But it appears humanity's reach to place itself among the stars has become the modern day Tower of Babel. And it's getting easier to see the similarities and how this may all end. And with those happy thoughts in mind, it's time for today's honorable mention. Last week's honorable mention failed to land softly on the moon's south pole, but this week's presentee was successful. India's Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft made the country only the fourth to land on the moon after its own previous failure with Chandrayaan-2 in 2019. Three launched to space on July 14th upon a LVM-3 rocket and arrived at lunar orbit on August 5th. Then this past Wednesday, the lunar lander began a 19-minute powered descent to the moon's surface and touched down gently at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Aboard the vessel is a solar-powered rover that will demo roving capabilities for future missions. Neither will survive the dark side of the moon, so their mission will last until the sun sets in roughly two weeks. That's all for today. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, eccentric supporters, for eccentrically supporting the channel. And a nominal Friday to all. Until next Friday, Godspeed.